Alrighty then, we are affixing to can these few sweet potatoes. You know why? Because it's food. And I'm gonna do them in pint jars. And I'm gonna put a picture in here on the Ball Blue Book. This one on the rules for canning sweet potatoes. And I am generally a stickler for following safe canning rules. But this defies, what's the word? Common sense. It wants me to boil these in the skin, right? So wash them and drain them, they've been washed, and then put them in a steamer, boil or steam 15 to 20 minutes or until you can easily remove the skins. And the inside would be kind of fairly firm. Has anyone tried to manage dealing with a hot tater. I ain't doing it. I ain't fixing to do it. So I'm going, they're already cleaned, like I said, I'm going to peel them, cut them into chunks, put them in some boiling water till they're just firm with a fork, and then I'm gonna can them in my pint jars and just add Berlin water from my um, proper tea kettle, you know, proper hot water kettle. That's what I'm gonna do. I don't like making a sugar syrup. My husband doesn't like it, but he is a freakopotamus for some sweet tater. So it don't look like much to you. I don't care if I get two pint jars. Food in a jar is food in a jar, and it's canning, and it ain't hard. But you do have to pressure can sweet taters. Bottom line, it is what it is. Don't break that part of the rule. And don't be a kitchen weenie either because sweet taters are hard, hard, hard. And you're gonna make a mess. So don't do this after you vacuum or sweep and mop your kitchen floor because this goes everywhere. But I'm gonna be putting these in my compost pot. All right, so this ain't like chopping up a white tater. Bam, yeah, there we go. And today, AT&T is coming to supposedly fix my DSL, which has not worked right since May. I basically have the speed of dial-up, and I can have one window open at a time. So, I'm hoping that'll work out, because I have videos queued up. But you can't do that when you ain't got a good interweb connection. Don't chop your fingers off. Be careful. It's a tater, it's hard, it's a sweet tater. Here's an example of a little bitty hider. Can you see it? Yep, whoops, pull that right off. It's a little deeper than it should have been. I ain't a fixin' to get the botulism, but thanks for thinking of me. Now a white tater, I can peel with just a regular paring knife. A sweet tater, I use my little peeler. And these are specialized tools. When you get a little spot like that, if you take that little melon ball part, turn it in there, look, it's like magic, comes right out. So learn how to drive your tools in your kitchen that can make things easier for you. Easy is better, okay? Why wear out your old lady arm, y'all might not be old, um, when you ain't got to. So I'm gonna make sure I got no blemishes on this to go into my canning jar. And like I said, make some mess, sticks to your hand. It's a big deal. Also, you don't just have to make a swipe, right? It's designed to go back and forth. Look at there, kind of magical. Goodness gracious, look at there, look at there. Tools in the kitchen. Interessante, very interesting. Now that I've got them chopped, take this time to get to know your potato. Look for those little spots that you can just take out. Anything that you missed. Look at each piece, study it. Some you'll find is just skin that was stuck that you peeled off. It will come off in the water, but check anyway. Look at this one, that's kind of pitiful but it's gonna go in that jar. So get to know your potato, clean up your potato. So now what I'll do after I get to know my potatoes and inspect them carefully, 
I'm gonna drop them into boiling water. And then hopefully I'll remember to show you, see how some of this just wipes off because it's from that skinning process, taking off that their skin. All right, so I'm gonna do what I do. You do something productive and whatever you do, hashtag wash your hands. Scrub them, clean them. Don't touch your face. Here's another wonderful tip. If you just take your tater and plop it in the water, it makes a splash. Land it on the other taters. It don't make such a big splash, then you don't burn your hand. We have learned how to use our skin peeler and how not to get a third degree burn while we're trying to boil some sweet taters. This is an epic day of knowledge here at the Marsh Mouse. So I told you if I could remember, I would show you the consistency I get them to. That turned out to be eight minutes of boiling. I'm firing on all cylinders today. I'm remembering stuff. So I want this fork to go in a little bit. I don't want them to be mushed. And that's hot, so hot. So it goes in just a little bit with some resistance. So there you go. Now we're going to get them in a jar. It ain't hard. It's Cannon Sweet Taters. And that there is good eating. Yep. All right, so we've got our jar hot, because remember, we're gonna be putting hot taters with hot water, and we don't want thermal shock to break our jar. Don't be an idiot, okay? Take your time, get stuff hot, do it right, and have your pokey joe handle handy. If you are not prepared to debubble our pokey joe, as I call it, do not try to can. It's epically important to get that air out of there. I've got my little Presto heating up on the stove, so I got a hot jar going in some almost hot water, and there shouldn't be any drama. Don't make drama. Nobody needs that cannon. All my bowls are full of produce I've grown. I need a spoon. Where's my spoon? Perfect, it's right where I left it. So we're gonna get some of these taters out, which will not turn into mush, because we didn't do them too long. All right, I ain't sticking my fingers in there. I am not fixing to put anything metal in there. So I'm gonna put my hand up here, shake a bakey, because I need one inch of head space. I have my cheat sheet ready, okay? So I do it right. Now, you can add a half teaspoon of salt. I do not. It is not for preserving it. That's just for flavor. I'm not a big salt user, and we put our spices in when we make it. It ain't hard. I always add nutmeg to mine after I open the jar, not in the jar, because some spices can explode and make this funky taste that I don't like. So we gotta get our vinegar to wipe off our lid, rim, not our lid, our rim. So let's get our proper cat out. We're going for one inch of head space. Now we gotta poke a joe ourselves. This is hot. can use a wee dab more. And I'm gonna include the graphic, if I can remember, I'm old, that the Needy Homesteader is showing how you can use the jar uh, rims and areas to figure out your headspace, if you'd like to do that. She said, spread it far and spread it wide. And when the Needy Homesteader says to do something, I'm a fixin' to do it. All right, so now we got to take our magic wand. Get our lid. Center it on there. Let's get our ring on. Fingertip tight. For me, it's the limp wrist method. It's too hot. Hang my fingers when they can't turn anymore. That is perfect for me. So in the canner with one. Okay, I got stuff to do here. Y'all have already seen how to do one. I'm going to do what I do. You go do what you do. And we'll be back. Bye. Huh?
Well, that doesn't happen often. I ended up with five pints or pence, as my grown woman niece still says to this day, with none left over. So that's pretty groovy. So I got five pints in there, and they will process, according to my cheat sheet, for 65 minutes. But first, I'm going to vent my Presto canner for 10 minutes when it gets that steady stream. Now I'm gonna clean up my mess because I'm also having my dehydrator taters, which I washed my mandolin and all that. So it's a tater kind of day here. I love taters. Taters are good for you. Sweet taters in particular. Then my little pet cock, but it's not, is up. I've got a steady steam of stream. Rudder. So I'm gonna set my timer for 10 minutes as well as set that time write that time down. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. All right, this is a test for the new canners out here. My processing time has ended. I have turned off my burner, and as you can see, my dial gauge is dropping down. The test question is, when do you remove this and open the canner? And the answer to that question is when this dial gauge has reached zero and this pet cock, but it's not, has dropped down. Then I remove that jiggler weight and I still do not open the canner for 10 minutes. So when the dial gauge goes to zero, the pet cock, but it's not, drops. I remove my jiggler weight. I wait 10 minutes before opening this canner very carefully and removing my jars. So that's the answer to it. Eh, little test there. Surprise, surprise. So now it's dropped and I set my timer for 10 minutes, then I can open the canner and take out my jars. Easy peasy. It ain't hard, it's just canning. The science is done for us. There they are, five pints of beautiful sweet taters grown in the garden. Hard to beat that with a stick. Look at them, still processing away. I love the science of canning. It's brilliant. Keep it weird, y'all.